let's return now. And each of those was a half cell, right? So we were dealing with half cells, right? So now that you can calculate, kind of work with those half cells and do those kind of calculations, we're going to return back to our full uh, standard sales. Well, we're going to introduce a standard sale. Okay, we have a couple of problems here. One of them is when we did this reaction over here, for example, we wrote this as what well, reduction is gain. We wrote this as a reduction. And it's going to have a certain potential associated with it. Yeah, it's going to have a certain voltage associated with it. But if I write it the other way, the voltage is going to be different. Yeah. And so the problem is, I could, if I'm talking about aluminum and I'm talking about converting it to aluminum ion, this converts the ion to aluminum. If I'm going to make me a standard table and I'm going to publish my, my values, why don't I do it this way? Why don't I write it like this and show the metal going to the electron? Now, to me, that's a lot more intuitive. So I have to pick one of these. I got to write it as an oxidation. Oxidation is lost. The aluminum is losing electrons. Or I have to write it as a, as, as a reduction. It's gaining. So what am I going to do? Well, there was actually some debate on that. And the world decided if we're going to publish data, which I'm going to show you in a second, what's called standard reduction potentials, we have to agree on what we're going to do. So the agreement is you're going to write as much stuff as you can as half cells where you show the electrons being lost or gained. Okay, so we're going to do the half cell thing. And furthermore, we're going to write them as reductions. We're going to publish these as reductions. What does that mean? You're going to show how you make every metal or whatever from the ions. That's it. And so those are called reduction potentials. Volts are potentials. So how much volts you get out is the potential. So what they're writing is how many volts would be generated by a half cell going to some target product when written as a reduction. There was a debate as to whether you, they should produce standard oxidation potentials, which I think makes a whole, whole lot more sense. But they didn't do it. Okay, that's the first point. Second point is this is not an absolute scale. We need something to be zero and scale everything from it. We need to do some reactions and say, hey, that's zero. Again, just like with temperature, what did we do? We said we need some event to be the zero mark. And the smartest kid in the class raises their hand and you say, what? What do you think is a good idea? And they say, I think we should use the freezing point of water as zero. And they say, you know, that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. And so the freezing point of water, that event became known as zero degrees C. Now we know there's temperature there, right? You know, it's actually right, it's 273K. But it doesn't matter. It all works if you scale it. If you get a reference point and you look at differences, it's going to work out. Okay. And so that's what they had to do with electrochem is peg some half cell, drive a stake into the ground and say, thou shalt be zero volts. And then everything we do, we're going to do that reaction. We're going to calibrate our little voltmeter to read zero. And then when we do anything else, we'll see how far it strays from zero. And that's what we're going to call the voltage. That's called the standard reduction potential. Okay, we're going to use them at standard states. Remember, we talked about standard states, one molar, all of those things earlier. Okay, so we have standard states. And now we need the zero point. So the zero point, don't overthink it. It was just decided this is what it's going to be. It's not going to be the freezing point of water. It's going to be the conversion of two moles of hydrogen ions in one molar solution going to hydrogen gas at one atmosphere. 
that reaction. That's it. That's your freezing point of water. That's your zero point. Don't overthink it. So that is your standard, and because it's hydrogen, it's called standard hydrogen electrode, or abbreviated SHE. Okay, so we're interested in what SHE does. Everything is going to be relative to SHE. Okay, from that, you build a standard reduction table. Now we start measuring the temperature of everything else. What's the boiling point? What is it when it's this? What is it when it's that? What is it when you put enough water and, and I don't know, something else happens. So you find all these events and you measure the voltage. And then you subtract from it. You reference it, how far it is from she. Yes. And then that's the voltage of that half cell. Makes sense? Okay. So let me go and show you the table. So this is what happens. So you're going to have a bunch of half cell reactions and you're going to have volts here and they're going to be written the sign is going to be really important because that's what the sign is for the reduction if you have to use the oxidation number guess what you're going to do turn the sign around on that so i'm just showing you right quick where we're going to go with this we're going to build a table of everything and then we're going to use the tables yep Okay, just like you did for delta H, delta G, and delta S. They built all these tables of all these things, and then you can go do reactions. Once you have a reaction, you can just look on the tabulated data. Same song, second verse in Electrochem. So how do we build our table? Well, it's really easy. We just run everything compared to, right? We run as many of these reactions as we can where one of the cells is, the, is she. And once you do that, since she is zero, maybe I'll use a highlighter. Since she is always zero, whatever your cell voltage gives you, whatever your cell voltage gives you, that has to be, that's the voltage that's assigned to this other half cell that you're interested in, right? Why? Because we define that as zero so we can ignore it. So whatever you get for your overall cell is what the half cell of interest has to be if the other one is zero, which we defined it as zero. So that's how we peg it. That's how it's pegged. Right. Okay. So let's look at, so let's kind of review. So for any cell voltage in which she is one of the half cells, then the voltage of the entire cell is also the voltage of the other half cell. Why? Because the standard hydrogen electrode is equal to zero. Okay. Hopefully that's not too terribly complicated for second semester chemistry students. Okay. Here we go. So, so for example, if we want to know what happens with copper, we take our standard hydrogen. And by the way, zero, what's the opposite of zero? Z zero. So you can use this, you can use she either way. You can run it as an oxidation or reduction. It's still what? Equals zero. So there we go. Okay. So here we ran it, uh, we, we ran this equation and we wanted to see what the reduction potential of copper is. So we ran hydrogen as an oxidation. That's okay, it's still equals zero. And when you go through the equation, you wind up with this equation. There we go. And for this reaction, it was 0.337. So we know that since that's zero, then the standard reduction potential for copper two going to copper is 0.337. And I guess we turn it into, is it on here? Uh, that would have been really good. To, yeah. Oh, so there we go. And so what we do is we then publish that data and say, good. Anytime we have copper going, copper two ions going to copper, under standard conditions, it's going to generate 0.337 volts. And we put it in our table. And then we do this for everything. And we get us a big fat table. Yes. Okay. As an aside, some things won't react with this hydrogen or whatever. So that's okay. We can take two other things. Yep. And we can do that rack and stack Hess thing and we can come up with it another way. But you get the basic idea. By hook or crook, we've pegged everything ultimately back to she. We, by hook or crook, we pegged everything back to the freezing point of water. Okay. So here we go. So now let's talk about standard reduction potentials. Okay, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. One, I have seen people that are really uh, just, they just can't give it up, 
can't can't give it up. And and so they'll have a standard oxidation potential. <laughs> so do be aware that that if you see these and and the electrons are given off that it's a, it's rare, but you will see standard you know oxidation potentials. Okay, but most tables are reduction standard reduction potentials. Okay. The other thing that I need to mention, because that was a problem here <laughs> with me with this table, is all the textbooks I ever had with standard reduction potentials. They put the most reactive element at the top and the least reactive at the bottom. All right? Okay. In other words, the big plus values were at the bottom and the big minus values were at the Every table I've ever seen up to this textbook, and this textbook flips out upside down. So what you need to do anytime you get a table, you have been warned here, is you need to pick out what's the less active metal end of the table and what's the most active end of the metal table. So let me tell you how to do that really quickly. I, I wrote all this out there to, to, to kind of remind you and remind myself what I've got going. So what's the less active end of the table? Well, it's the end that's going to have gold or silver, right? We've talked about that over and over. Those are inert or nearly inert metals. That's why they use them for fillings in your teeth, for Pete's sake, right? Because they're not very reactive. So, so what I normally do is I look at one of these tables and I find an end with gold or silver in it. I know the gold and silver end is going to be my least active end of the table. And therefore, I know what? The opposite end is going to be the most active. And the most active end is going to be the ones with potassium and lithium. And you know that. We've talked about that. And sodium. Yep. So those. Sodium, potassium, lithium. Those things explode if you just put them in water. That's a good clue that that's really, really reactive. Okay. So what you're going to notice is, so the first thing I did when I looked at this, I, oh, there's the less reactive end. And that's the end that's going to have the positive sign. And this is the... This is the least reactive, and this is the most reactive metals, and those are going to have a negative sign. Okay, so on the more negative end, it's going to be negative, but look, you're writing those as what? A reduction. So when you write these as an oxidation, the more reactive material is going to be oxidized. When you write these reverse, right? Because one of them has to be an oxidation, one of them has to be reduction your least reactive metal is going to stay like it is. It's going to stay as a reduction. But your more reactive metal, and this is why they stack them up this way, it's going to get turned around backward. You can't have a, a, two, a, a cell where both half cells are reduction, right? One of these has to be an oxidation. Which one is going to be the oxidation? Well, so one of these has to get turned around. The one that gets turned around is the one with the most negative number. So you leave this like it is. If Let's say I'm reacting these two materials, magnesium and potassium. I'm going to have to turn potassium around. Why? One of these has to serve as the oxidation half cell. Remember, everything is written as a reduction. So which one do you turn around is the big key. You turn around a one that's going to give you the most positive number for voltage. Your most positive voltage. And the one that's going to be the most positive voltage is going to be the one that what? Has the most negative number. Mathematically, you will get the largest positive value when you add these together if you turn the most negative one around. It's just a mathematical construct. So, the, remember, these are reduction potentials. Well, potassium, and we know this. Think about this logically. Does lithium want to lose an electron? Yes. Lithium, because it explodes, that's what it does. So lithium really wants to give up this electron. And so that's why it's a large negative number. Because when you turn it around, you're going to get a large positive number. So we know lithium really wants to go this way. And that tells you that because it explodes in water. Okay. Does gold want to lose an electron? No, it's not very reactive. So gold does not want to do this. Intuitively, gold does not want to do that. Why? Because it's inert. Yes, that's what inert means. I don't want to react. This is the reaction of this material. For this to react in a redox reaction, it's got to give up some electrons. Well, gold's not reactive, so it doesn't do it. Yes. So you can see 
on this table, the the key is. So I can I can fig I can write the reaction for any two of these. It's really easy. I'm going to look at where they are on the table. And I'm going to take the one that's the largest negative number and I'm going to turn it around and make it the oxidation. And so I'm going to write this like it is as the reduction and I'm going to make this one the oxidation. Or maybe I'll react it with cobalt, in which case I'll turn this one around. Anything that's below it, that's the one that gets turned around. Okay, so, right. Okay, so I kind of muddled the delta G thing there because I wasn't thinking about the overall voltage. I was thinking about the half cell. But anyway, so you've got it. Okay, are there any questions on that standard reduction table? Okay, because why it's important is we're going to do what I just told you. We're going to figure out the voltage for, in, for entire cells. Okay, so here we go. For example, and one thing I want to remind you is this voltage. Okay, the voltage amperage drawing. I had one way back here. Okay, so when we talk about potential, remember we're talking about the drop. That's what voltage is representing. It's just the height of this drop. Okay. Which is different because we know, for example, well, so we got a 12 volt battery, right? So let's say that, that, that height right there is 12 volts. That's the potential. Well, guess what? I can take a car battery and if it's charged, it'll actually start my car. But if I take eight one and a half cell flashlight batteries and string them together i put it on the voltmeter it says 12 volts but it won't start my car that's a problem yeah so this voltage isn't the whole story you've got this thing called amperage so the best way and i'm and i'm reviewing this because this is where we're at because we're going to calculate voltages here okay so the larger volt, the better, but that's not the whole story. And this is why this thing, amperage, keeps coming up. Okay, so here's the best analogy that I have. It, 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 I, whether this is really that great or not, it, whether this is technically true or whether it's just a mnemonic, a memory device, I don't really know, but I know it really helps me out. Potential is the height of this hill. And amperage is how many electrons come over the hill at any one member, number of units per time. So it's, it's uh, so 12 volts, my, t my flash nut batteries that add up to be 12 volts won't start my car because it's, it's very low amperage. Yep, not many electrons are coming over the hill. I don't have many soldiers coming over the hill. I can't win the war, okay? But if I have a car battery, it's still only 12 volts. I've got the same hill height but now I have tons of soldiers coming over the hill. So many electrons, I can turn that big old heavy crankcase on my car. Okay, there we go. So that's just kind of to remind you. So where we're at now is looking at the potential of this. Okay, and the potential is that thing that's really, really close related to like delta G and delta H and all that, where we're talking about hill heights. Yes, okay. But for this one, unlike thermo, for this one, we have another component, which is not only do you have a hill height, but you've got things actually traversing that hill. And that's what's, so I would think a potential is like a, like a thermodynamic parameter, but you've got an additional component. And of course, that's why this chapter is one of the last ones in a textbook. Right, okay, so let's go back to where we are. So this is one where it's going to say calculate E for our cell. Okay, so if we're going to do a cell, what are we going to have? We're going to have a, an oxidation part and we're going to have a reduction part, right? We've got a full cell. This isn't a half cell, a full cell. A galvanic cell. Good, it tells us. This is going to be naturally flowing. We're not pumping any energy in from the outside. It's composed of a silver electrode. And it's in a one molar silver solution. Okay, we know that's a standard solution, so that's okay. That tells me I can use the standard reduction table because this is standard conditions. And magnesium electron, oh, it happens to be in exactly one molar magnesium nitrate solution. Lovely. These are both standard solutions. 
and it's all at 25 degrees C. Oh, better yet. Jeez, that's standard temperature. How lovely. Everything's at standard conditions. Uh, guess what I'm going to use probably. I'm guessing I'm going to use the standard reduction. So what am I going to do? Here's the steps I'm going to do. I'm going to make this, I'm going to draw an equation where I make this metal. I'm going to assign a reduction potential. I'm going to find out which ones. I'm going to look at the reduction potential. I'm going to take the more negative half cell and turn it around backward. And then I'm going to do the half thing and just add them together until they add up to get the equation I want. And here we go. Okay, so let's look at that. So here's what I got off the standard reduction table. Did I take this back? Yep. Okay, so there's what I got off the standard reduction table. Okay, I just read that straight. So silver is 0.7996. So silver, now that I buggered this up, I'm going to have to use a different. Okay, so silver, uh, silver's not very reactive, so I'm going to have to, yep. Okay, so it's not very reactive, so I need to look at the top. See? It's 0.7996. So I'm just going to write that reaction just like it is. There it is. I transpose that from, okay. And I need something where I'm making magnesium and mag2. Okay, so I'm going to find something magnesium. Oh, there it is. I've already got it. Okay. So I'm going to write the, I'm just going to pull these, I'm going to do this in steps because I'm not a real clever boy and I can't do all these in my head. So I'm just going to write both of them as reductions. So I'm going to go from mag2 to magnesium, minus 2.3, and there it is. So I rewrote that. Yes? Okay, so now I've got it. So now I've pulled my standard reductions, and now I have to make this cell that's described here. Right. So so what's going to happen when I, when I, when I make... Uh, when I take my silver electrode and put it in the silver sluice, I take my magnesium electrode and I put it and I put all of those in, do this to it, the, just the voltaic, right? So what you just did was you took one of these and you put it in the solution and you took the other one you put in the solution and you connected them with a wire this is what's implied from every one of these questions. You hooked them up in a wire. Oh, I was pretty close there. Instead of, instead of copper, just pretend this is magnesium, and we got this. So we connected those with a wire, and then we put a salt bridge there. When you get a galvanic cell, it's going to give you the metals and the concentrations of these solutions. It assumes you know the whole thing looks like this. It assumes it. See? And by the way, so now what we're doing is we're just going back and doing this with numbers. Just so you know, what you're going to do is you didn't know which way the electrons are going. You're going to figure this out using the standard reduction potentials. So that's what we're, we're doing now. So that's kind of where it all started. Oops, don't get ahead too far. Okay, so which one of these is going to get turned around? Which one's right? They're both reduction, reduction game. One of these has to play role of oxidants. Which one is it? It's the one that gives us the biggest positive number when we add them together. Which one's that going to be? You're going to get that by turning the one with the, with the largest negative number around. So I'm going to take this reaction, and I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to change that sign. And so there's the same reaction right there written again. So I'll do that one in blue. So this blue reaction stayed the same. And this one, the yellow one, got turned around. Now magnesium is reactant and mag ion is the ions. Okay, so now we have it. I turned the sign of it around to plus. Hmm, but guess what? I, these things don't match up. Really? Nah, what's wrong here? Well, that's got two electrons and that has only one electron. So that ain't going to work. Well, so what do I got to do? I got to multiply this top equation by 2. Notice what keyed me I need to do that? The number of electrons. What do we know about a redox? The number of electrons lost has to be equal to the number of electrons gained. In this case, we're losing 1 and gaining 2. Can't do it. Okay. Here's the trick. Here's the tripwire. Okay, let's see. 
can I write text here? Okay, so I'm not sure. Okay, there we go. All right, so I went to a lot of trouble to type that out for you. That's going to let you know what you're going to miss on the test. Okay, so the tripwire is you have to multiply this by 2, right? Yes, but guess what you don't do? You don't change that. Really? Yeah, you don't do that. You can use twice as much, but your hill height doesn't get any better. You're just pumping a lot more electrons through there. So this is going to kind of do that amperage thing, but it's not going to affect your voltage thing. Don't change it. Yes, you have to change the reaction so that it works out or you won't get the right reaction. You do not change the voltage. The hill height doesn't change. Because you use more, the hill height doesn't change on this. That's your tripwire with thermo. I mean, that's the difference between this and thermo. Okay. The analogies are there, but it's a difference. It's a subtle difference, but really, really important. So you just have to remember that. You've just got to remember when you go from oxidation reduction, you do change the sign. When you change the amount of material that's there, you don't change the hill height. What you really change is what? Amperage, I guess. Okay, so now when I do this, I can now write a balanced equation. How do I know this is right? Because what do I have now? These two electrons, you know you're there when your electrons cancel out. Why? Because we don't write the electrons in standard reactions. Have you ever written a standard reaction in a whole year and a half you've been taking chemistry? Where it wasn't in a half cell and you just wrote the electrons. No, we don't show the electrons. Why? Because it's always written so that they cancel out. They have to cancel out. Because the amount lost, the reactants, has got to be equal to the amount gained, the products. Okay, so what do we have here? We now have our reaction and we just add these up. Now, if one of these was a negative, of course, you're going to add a negative or subtract it. But in this case, this negative became positive. So the tripwire is to not do that, and the other tripwire, or it's not really a tripwire, it's just a, it's not quite that tricky. I'd call it a tripwire, but you do need to know the change the sign. Okay. And just so you know, uh, if they want to make this question really hard, they could have just written it like this, and it says, what's that? Okay, so you could, that, that would be a way to test to see if you understand the shorthand. Yes. But that's enough for now, so we'll leave it and pick it up next time with the Nernst equation.